All right, guys, thanks for taking a look at my bus. I figured I'd start in the garage here just because it gives a different perspective underneath the LED lights and indoor. We can kind of get a better view down the side of the bus, then I'll take it outside as well so you can see it in the actual sunlight. But the main thing I wanted to show in here is just the paint job. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's a pretty straight bus. Um, it is absolutely not a super high-end paint job. Um, the bus turned out much nicer than I ever thought it would be, but I was not going for a super high-end, uh, like, show-quality paint job. First of all, I just can't afford that. And second of all, I didn't want the bus that nice. I wanted to be able to drive the bus. And it actually turned out quite a bit nicer than I than I thought it would have, and so I'm very proud of it. But again, I would consider it like a six and a half, seven out of 10. I do work at a high-end restoration shop, so I know what a $50,000 paint job looks like, and this bus is not it. But as far as a driver, it's very nice. See the nose is really, really nice. Knock on wood, we've been driving the bus now for a while. We definitely do put a good amount of miles on it, and I don't think there's a single chip anywhere in the nose. Like that little tiny dot there on the bumper. That little dot are the only even little rock chips I see. The nose is very, very nice. There you gives an idea down the driver's long panel. I mean, the bus is radically more straight than would ever would have come from the factory. But again, I'm not trying to say that it's an incredible super high-end paint job. It's just a nice driver paint job. And there's just a lot of little things about the bus. And of course, they're never done. But this bus truly isn't done. Um, a lot of little things need to be finished up on it. There's a lot of little things that could be nicer. There's actually, to be completely up front, there are some dents in the back of the roof here that I, at the time, I just didn't think it was a big deal to get them taken out. Um, it was a driver quality bus, and now in hindsight, I wish I had, but there are literally some ripples and dents in the back of the roof here. That if you really, really want the bus to be, you know, a show, show bus, uh, there's nothing like this in the rest of the bus as far as the body. But the roof, I knew I was running a rack and things like that, and I just wasn't overly concerned. But it got to a point where you got to focus on the things you can afford and some things you kind of have to let go. And I just didn't have every little dent taken out of the roof line. And certain things, like we wanted to keep the original glass on the corners as much original glass as we could so you can see it's bubbled up here like they do a little bit of delamination on both corner windows We did crack two pieces of glass while we were putting the bus back together. So the rear window here is cracked. Um, been driving it for over a year now and it has not progressed, knock on wood. Here you can see the other corner window is a little less, but is delaminated a bit. And we also cracked this piece of glass right here. 
if you can see that. There we go. So we got everything opened up now. So the motor is by Type E Motorsports. Uh, Brian's a great guy, really did a great job on the engine. And I'll put out full specs on it. And we've got the fire de deterrent system mounted above the motor to be safe. Just had this rear panel made by uh, West Coast Classic Interiors and it actually needs to be trimmed. That's why I've got that uh, little blanket across there just because the piece is too long and still needs to be trimmed down. You'll be able to see photos, but everything is heavily, heavily sound deadened with kill mat. But you can see we did not opt to put a headliner in the bus, but everything painted instead. So the camper kit, it's a father-son team down in Florida. I believe the last name is Powers. I think it was Ralph Powers. Uh, anyways, they do advertise on the Samba. Just look up um, camper kits, West Valley kits, and you'll find them. Uh, I got every bell and whistle they offered at the time. This is basically an SO33 kit, but European style, I guess you would call it. As this being a, a window bus, we didn't want the cabinets to get up into the window, so they cut those down for us. That's so very, very nice quality. Highly recommend these guys all the way around. Well, this, the upholstery was done by Jan Lind Interiors. This is a reverse Spirit of Le Mans uh, plaid pattern. Again, you can see everything is heavily done up in kill mat. You've got your full storage underneath each of these. And I will show it made into a bed here in a little bit. I just had the fresh air intake completely rebuilt by Silver Lining Auto Restoration in Silverton, Oregon. That was just done last week. So that is completely fresh inside and functioning exactly how it should. So a little history on the bus. I guess I've known this bus since the 90s. I was up in the Moses Lake, Washington area, first time I seen it, a buddy of mine had it, and again this is a 1962 15 window that was clipped with a full roof graft back in the 90s, long before there was anything for reproduction metal. So this is a German built 15 window and a full German built roof off from a deluxe bus. There you can see the headache rack. So the, the roof was put in as factory. So the bus has been a quote 23 window since the 1990s. 
and we had an opportunity. It was just a project that my friend was not never going to get to. So he sold us the bus four years ago. It was basically a rolling shell. And we took it to Jake Miller up in Winthrop, Washington. And we drove the bus out of his shop. Um, it was an original paint bus under about five coats of respray over the years and spent a bunch of hours attempting to paint strip it. But it became obvious during that process that the bus had been scuffed. The original paint was scuffed before they did the first of five paint jobs. So uh, we gave up on trying to strip the paint and have it as a patina bus, which is our original goal. And uh, had the opportunity to get it painted, so we just jumped on that. And, and here we are with a very, very nice bus. It was really never our thought or intention that we would get to this point. But again, Jake Miller did all the metal work, all the mechanical work with Type B Motorsports uh, suspension and motor. At the time, he put a different transaxle in it. We have since switched to a heavy-duty transaxle by a German transaxle in Bend, Oregon. And I have full stats for uh, the transaxle and the engine that I will post. But it's a barn door-style steering wheel reproduction. But again, like I say, things are never done. Um, the front seat is currently, it's all new padding, but it's just in an Indian blanket. We had thoughts of how we were gonna do that to match the rest of the interior, but just uh, no longer be taking the bus to that level. But you can see all the new rubbers in it, all the window felts. Actually, the entire upper door frames, again, were, were rebuilt by Silver Lining Classic Auto Restoration, and they did an amazing job. So everything is is fresh safari windows we did not have the tabs welded onto the dash i find if you just close these clips it keeps 90 percent of the ran out anyway and i just didn't really want to weld those components onto the dash The speedo, as you can see, is stuck at about 70 miles an hour, and we have trouble shot it, and it is the speedo. So, again, they're never done. I just use my phone as my speedo, and I'm just actively watching out at swap meets until I find one. It's a factory floor mat, so it's got some wear to it, but it is original VW floor mat. And of course, there's no rust in the bus. It's the original uh, hump, 62 seat. So it was correct bench seat for the bus. Uh, the suspension again is by Type E Motorsports. We'll explain more about that when we get it up on a lift. But it's four-wheel disc brake, bolt-in, independent rear suspension. It's a 1968cc stroker motor. A repop Westy rack. Now the Porsche wheels are reproduction, but they're really, really early reproductions. There's actually no type of stampings on them. Um, no name brand. But it's Brian at Type E. It's his hybrid suspension, so it's all sealed bearings. There's no maintenance to be done to the bearings. And the bus just drives beautifully. It goes down the road so nice. So here's a quick look with the table removed. All right, 
and here's a look at the bed made up. Um, you would slide the white poles out if you're actually going to go to sleep, but or actually use it as a bed, I should say. But gives you an idea of the size of the bed. It's nice and comfortable. Cushions are nice and thick. But again, these just slip out there, pop right out. So you might be wondering what these holes are in the side of the bus here. <laughs> That's because we drove it for two years with Hearst bumpers, front and rear. I absolutely love Hearst bumpers. So they're all painted up in silver white. I just haven't mounted them. The rear ones are hanging in my rafters. I've never had a ribbed bumper bus, and obviously this shouldn't be one, but as a 62 that we made look like a late 58, so it's got silver white ribbed bumpers on it. Uh, Jake converted the fried eggs to the nipple turn signals. Uh, it's got an early gauge pod, a thin partial tray, and the rear tail lights are correct for a late 58. So again, we took a 62 and made it look like a late 58. Just the look we wanted. Uh, we didn't go as far as is messing with cargo door hinges or anything like that. Just the more basic things that we could do to make it look the part. And it is a factory ceiling wax red and white bus. Um, we just opted to do single tone ceiling wax red. And a kind of a cool side note about the roof that was grafted onto it was even the correct colors for the bus. So it was a, a seating wax red and white roof. You can look back at the pictures of it before we paint stripped it and it was the, the red was fading through the white, which was heartbreaking to cover up, but it was just the reality of the situation. And again, these mounts here, we have a BBT awning for it. And I'll show you pictures of that. But there's just a requirement. I always wanted a 23 window with a Westie interior and a Westie awning.
All right, just one more quick walk around out in the sun. Uh, yes, and the hole in the rear bumper, that is part of the hearse bumpers, as we also had that rear one modified to pull a small trailer. All right, give you a quick look at the undercarriage of the bus. Again, the, all the suspension and the engine were all done by Type E Motorsports. And the bus just drives beautifully. When I first started driving the bus, I had a leaky master cylinder. So you can see it kind of ate up some of the paint on the driver's side of the beam.